You ever been shopping around for lights and really haven't run across anything inside the stores? Sure, we have these from Saima, which do really, really well, but they don't throw out a long distance of light. These also are from Saima. We get them off the internet. They're LED lights uh, that can be used with the Sony IR cam. But once again, you're still paying anywhere from $20 to about $65 for these lights. Well, today we're going to show you an easy way to create a light for about $15. And all you have to do, it's one stop, is pick up all these parts at Radio Shack or any other electronic store. So we ran down to Radio Shack and picked up a few things. First thing we picked up was a hobby box. Eight LED lights fit inside this really nicely. Um, depending on the size of the lights and how many you're going to put in will depend on the size of the hobby box. And they range anywhere from small to huge. Then we picked up some extra wire. We picked up the LED lights. We picked up the resistors, and we'll talk about that a little bit later. Uh, for the LEDs, we picked up a switch, uh, on-off switch, and some heat shrink, and of course, some solder. And with the solder, you're going to need a soldering iron. So let's talk about some of the tools that we're going to have to use to create this box. We have the soldering iron, we have the pliers cutter strippers, we have the red sharpie pin, and then of course we have the solder. Uh, this project really isn't very difficult, and there's a lot of information on the internet. So when you're down at Radio Shack, and you find the bulbs that you like, you're going to have to find a resistor to go with it. Uh, remember our 10 millimeter bulbs? Right here, um, on the back, is all the information that you're going to need. Go to this website, it's LED.LINEAR the number one dot org and it has a LED wizard on it so with the information on this packet we're going to enter it into this website so right now it's asking for the source of voltage that's real important because you can go with a battery pack a 9.6 volt uh, we hit enter and look at that it's all changed it's a little bit easier you only need two resistors um, and then you could put in a series of four lights on those two resistors uh, once again, really easy to do, but the important information is always on the back of your LED bag. Now that you have the bulbs and you have the resistors, uh, we want to take the bulbs out of out of the package. Now you're going to notice that there are are two tails coming out of the LED bulb. The longer of the tail is the positive, so we take our red sharpie pen and we're going to want to color in that that long tail. The smaller of the tails uh, is the negative end of the bulb. Now with that out of the way, onto the hobby box. The hobby box has to fit eight large 10 millimeter, 10 millimeter LED bulbs, um, which isn't too hard because what we do is we measure. The first thing we do is we put a blue piece of painter's tape on there, uh, measure it out. You can mark it up all you want and uh, it won't affect the box at all and then we drill it. 5 8 drill bit for a 10 millimeter bulb almost fits perfectly, but we did have to do a little standing inside the hole. Otherwise, it could look like this. You'll notice that the bulbs are off and look kind of miscombobulated. Yeah. Remember that rule of thumb? Measure twice, cut once. I thought it was measure once, drill twice. I guess I was wrong. Now that we have the LED lights placed inside the uh, project box. We've taken the positive and negative ends of each LED and we've kind of crossed them over. Um, and you can kind of see it right there. So with the instructions, that kind of explains how we're going to do it. We put them together. Now on this side, I've already started soldering them together. Now at the end of the process, you should have um, the positive ones that are marked red. They should be up. And then where you're going to put your resistor, the negative side right there. So with everything soldered together, it should look something like this. You have your positives on this side. You have your negatives on this side. One of these connectors is really important uh, to have because it's going to add the, uh, the power to the lights itself 
and uh, it's going to plug directly into the battery. Now you can find these inside the old remote control car that you had or plane or whatever it was, uh, whatever battery source that you're using. Um, it's also really important. Okay, now what we've done is we've uh, drilled in our switch. It's a uh, on off. Well, that way you don't have to unplug the battery and uh, to kill the power, which you could do. I mean, if you wanted to uh, wire this in without the switch, uh, that's a possibility too. It just adds less stress on the battery when you're pulling it uh, on and off. Okay, so there you have it. You have the uh, switch that's wired in, battery's connected, and everything seems to be working pretty well. So now all we have to do is button it up. Put the screws back in it. Put a little Velcro on the back of the battery. So it keeps it in place and then attach it to the camera.